Hello, this is Dr. Masturbich, and this is part three of our fractured tooth series. And in this series, I'm going to discuss with you the a fractured back tooth or posterior tooth as secondary to having large restorations in the tooth. If you can come onto the screen here, um, this is a mold, lower molar that has a very large silver filling in it, and it's been in there for many years. And through the constant thousands and thousands of chewing cycles that this tooth has endured, you can see the fractures that have started to happen. Because this tooth gets flexed as it is chews, uh, these fractures start to um, crop up in the enamel. Now, as you recall in uh, previous sections, uh, when we were on this previous diagram, uh, this cross-sectional diagram, you can see the, uh, the enamels up here. And what we can see on this, on this molar is you can see this, this enamel is fractured. So when you come back over here, this is the enamel of the tooth and you can see the fracture. The question here is where does this fracture go? Does it track deeper or does it, uh, just, is it just in this enamel? Uh, we call this the marginal ridge of the tooth. Well, here's a close-up of it. It looks pretty significant down through here, but it is only significant if it is tracking deeper into that second layer of the dentin. So what do we, how do we deal with this? Well, we have to take the fillings out to have a look. Um, and so here's a cross-section, or no, excuse me, it's not a cross-section, but it's a, it's a section after we took the filling out. And you can see that the fracture here is is tracking into the dentin and coming up and then there's another one that's tracking from here around this direction. This tooth was uh, uh, sensitive sometimes and that's a very common uh, finding that we have when teeth you know once in a while on a chewing cycle someone will say ouch uh, because of a, of a specific way that they were chewing on the tooth that's often indicative of a fracture. Here with just a little bit of a different contrast on the digital fixture, you can see the fracture a little bit clearer coming in through here like this. And then the tooth was prepped and uh, for uh, for coverage or for a full crown or cap. And now you can see the fracture is coming down here, and it kind of tapers out here. And so we feel like we're below the fracture line with the edge of the crown. So we're going to try to tie this tooth together. And in fact, that's what happened in the the crown was placed and the, and the tooth has been asymptomatic in service. So this was a situation where we uh, were able to get to the tooth, tie it together with the restoration, and uh, have a, improved the prognosis significantly. This second case is a uh, very similar large silver filling fracture on the front and quite a large fracture you can see on the back. At least it looks worse uh, clinically. And uh, a little different view of the, the tooth, but coming from the back, here it is here again, and a fracture coming down here. So again, we don't know exactly what happens to this tooth um, underneath. We can only see on the surface when we, before we take the restorations out. And we come down to the x-ray, and then the question I often get on an x-ray is, is this, uh, can I see the fracture on the x-ray? How deep is the fracture? Well you really can't see the fractures at all on the radiograph because the, um, the film cannot resolve the crack and so you just can't see it. We take the, the x-rays for uh, different reasons uh, other than to see the fractures um, and so uh, this just illustrates that point. Now with the filling out in this tooth you can see that the fracture was coming off of this back one and it was tracking right forward, right clear up all the way up to the front here. So this is very significant fracture and this tooth was symptomatic and um, we have to know how deep this fracture goes before we can uh, say that this tooth is actually savable and functional. So the tooth was sent to the endodontist, a root canal specialist, and um, he opened up the chamber here and this is looking way down inside the tooth, way down here, if we can come back to this other cross-section again, uh, what we're looking at is just about at this level here into the, into the pulp chamber. And so with the microscope, he's looking for this crack to see where this crack went and see how far down it went. 
So here's the crack, and then it kind of disappears down this direction. So this, he felt that the bottom of the, the pulp chamber down in here was solid, and there, the fractures had ended. So this fracture had probably gone down to the point where it was involving the pulp of the tooth, but not deeper. Here's a little different view here. You can see the, the fills in the root canals. This is a material called gutta percha, and it's sealing up the root canals, and there's no fractures that can be seen in the pulpal floor. So this tooth was restored and um, put back into service and had a very uh, functional uh, result. Thank you for viewing this section and we'll move on to section uh, four in just a moment.